joining our broadcast today. We're so glad to have you. Now, remove all distractions and prepare yourself to receive a powerful and encouraging word from the Lord that's guaranteed to give you instructions now for your next. We also want to encourage you to sow into this ministry. There are three ways that you can give. You can use Cash App, which is dollar sign B-O-T-F-C-C, you can give on our website, buildersofthefaith.com, and you can download the Giveify app and search Builders of the Faith. Thank you for your generosity. our broadcast today we're so glad to have you now remove all distractions and prepare yourself to receive a powerful and encouraging word from the Lord that's guaranteed to give you instructions now for your next we also want to encourage you to sow into this ministry there are three ways that you can give you can use cash app which is dollar sign B O T F C C you can give on our website, buildersofthefaith.com, and you can download the Giveify app and search Builders of the Faith. Thank you for your generosity.
Everybody that's standing and everybody that's in the church. Come on, put your hands together and thank God that he allowed you to wake up. You see another day this morning. That someone didn't get up this morning. And it is a blessing to be able to be in the house of God one more time. I mean, you agree. It is a blessing. Thank you, Lord. And as we prepare our heart this morning to enter into the throne of God, I just want to encourage you all during this time of reposition ourselves and our minds and our heart, during this time of Lent, let's listen to what our pastor have to say, but not only our pastor, let's listen, let's listen to see what the Holy Spirit is saying through our pastor, because there's a message and there's a realignment that God is trying to work the church up. God is trying to prepare all of us to get in the place before his coming. So what I'm asking you all to do to to join me, let's see, can we go before the throne of God this morning in prayer? Gracious everlasting Father, most holy that you are. Father, we come one more time, Father, before your presence. We come, Father, with bowed heads and humble hearts, Father God, thanking you, Father, for who you are. You are our everlasting Father. Father, what you do, Father, can no man do what you do, Father. And Father, as we sit, my Father, as your dear children, seeking for directions and guidance this morning, Father. We ask you, Father God, that you have your way this morning in this service, Father. Father, we ask you right now, Father God, that you breathe among the atmosphere. Breathe among, my Lord, the social networks, Father God. Touch those, my Father, that are standing in the need right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father, you know exactly who they are, Father God. But Father, we pray today, you must, today Father, as we come together, you said, well, there's two or three gathered today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. There you are in the midst of the prayer. So, Holy Spirit, we welcome you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Help us today, Father, because we lean on you, Father God. And, Father, we lean not to our own understanding. But you said that you were guide us and direct us in every way, Father. So, Father, as we come today, Father God, we ask you right now, Father God, that you break up, my Father God, the airways and the grounds, Father God, that your spirit may move freely, Father, in the name of Jesus. And Father, even in this sanctuary, Father, in the name of Jesus, you are welcome, Father. Father, you are welcome in this house, Father God. You are welcome in this place, Father God. Father, a place that we've been set aside, Father, that you may be glorified in the name of Jesus, Father. A place, God, that we're able to exalt you and to lift up your holy and righteous name, Father, that you may be magnified in the name of Jesus. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you once again, Father God, for every, even the breath that we breathe this morning, Father God. We thank you for the mind that you allowed us to get up this morning. Be able, Father God, just to tell you thank you one more time, Father God, in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you, Father God, even for the ears that we're able to hear, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for every limb, Father, for every organ, Father God. Lord, for everything, Father, that you have placed inside of man, Father. But most of all, Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that lead and guide us, Father, to all righteous and all true, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, have your way today, Father God. Father God, as a broken vessel, God, we come before you, God. Father, we need you this morning, Father God. Father, we need you every second, every minute, and every hour, Father. We can't do nothing without you, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father. And Father, as you give us direction today, Father, and as we bow before our holy God and our holy King, you are the God of righteous, and you are the God of peace, a God of holiness, and the God is sanctified, Father, in the name of Jesus. Sanctify us this morning before your presence. Sanctify our heart this morning, God. Father, sanctify our mind this morning. Touch our spirit, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, that we, my Father, may be transformed. And that we may be renewed, Father God, by thy spirit, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And God, as we come to the house one more time, Father God, we ask you that you, my Father, prepare, my Father, your ministers, Father God. Father God, we ask you right now, Father God, that you prepare, my Father, your praise and worship team, Father. Father, that I'm singing, my Lord, Father, for your anointing, Father. It is your anointing to destroy the works and the yoke of the enemy, Father God. So God, I'm asking today, Father God, that you touch them, Father God. God, that they may sing, my Lord, to your glory, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father God. And Father, whatever defiles the spirit that comes into the house, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Father, we take full control, full charge, Father God. And Father God, even for the devourers, Father God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. Satan have no place in this sanctuary, Father, in the name of Jesus. 
We rebuke them, Father, in the name of Jesus. So, God, as we come once more time, yielding, my Father, broken, my Lord, that you, Father God, would have your free way in the name of Jesus. And, Father, during the time, God, as we've been a bow before you, and we lift you up, Father, we ask you that you touch a man, servant. Father, prepare his heart, his mind, and his spirit even more, Father God. Father, let the words, my Father, that speak out of their mouth, Father God, touch and penetrate every heart, every spirit, every soul, Father God. Father God, that even the ones that need you, Father God, that it be a breakthrough in their life, Father God, that healing take place, Father, that deliverance take place, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. And Father, even for that one in mind, Father God, someone, Father God, on their edge, they want to give up, Father. But Father, we ask you right now, Father, let that spirit touch him, Father God. Father, let them know that there's hope in you, Father God, because you are everything, Father, that they need in the name of Jesus. And Father, we ask you right now, Father, that you touch the bereaved family. Father, those that are lost loved one during this difficult time. And as you touch them, Father, we ask you right now, send the comfort that way, my Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Because God, you are who you are, Father. You are the great I am, Father. And Lord God, besides you, there is no other God. You are the true living wise God, Father. In the name of Jesus, Father. And God, as you touch those, my Lord, they may be sick. Even in their vessels today, Father God. Lord, we ask you right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, God. It is your anointing. It is your anointing, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Touch the sick, Father. Touch those that need to be healed in their body, Father. Father, you say that I've been in affliction of the righteous, Father God. But the Lord delivered them out of them all, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. So, God, let that spirit touch, Father. Let that spirit move, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father. And we be careful to give your name for all the gun on all the glory that is due to you, Father, and in the name of Jesus. So, God, we yield one more time. And, God, as we come before you, broken, because we need you. Father, there's no other place and no other way we can turn but to you, Father. So we come, Father, in the name of Jesus, with a willing spirit, submitting that you have your way and your free course during this service, Father God. And, Father, we thank you. We bless you. We magnify you. We glorify you, Father God. Because you are worthy and worthy to be praised, Father. We exalt your name above everything, Father. In the name of Jesus, Father God. So God, we ask you, Father, that you allow the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart to be accepted in our sight, O oh Lord God. You are our strength and you are our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's give God some praise this morning. Now, come on, we can do better than that. Let's give God some praise this morning. Because I don't know about you, I did wake up tired. And yes, we did have a long week. And I know how it is getting up early. But when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for us, my soul cries out. I get a pep in my step. I get happy. How about you? Because <laughs> a lot of us didn't wake up this morning. So we got a lot to be grateful for. Hallelujah. So I want y'all to stay in the middle. Y'all out there too, who's out there streaming, I want you to shake it off you do with me real quick. Yes. Just take all of that negativity and all that weak. Yes, and I want you to get it off of you. Shake it off of you because we have a God to glorify who is worthy of it. Uh -huh. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey man, I want y'all to get excited about that thing. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. All right, y'all ready to have a good time? Hey. Come on. I said y'all ready to have a good time? Yeah. Hey. Uh, uh, hey. Uh, uh, hey. I like that right there. Let me hear that one more time. Hey. Hey. Come on. And if y'all know the word sing with. Hey. Sing right the the branches he who abides in me will forever be fruitful indeed as I am the way ha, the truth and the light 
No one gets to the Father Except that it comes through me yeah. So let not mercy And truth Sing for sake
for steak us. If we just leave, bring me you God huh? yes. Lord God we feel your spirit in the atmosphere Lord God we need you on today Hallelujah. Lord God we got family that is hurting God huh? that is sick huh? that is not in their right mind Lord God we lift up our praise for them Lord God we pray to encourage them Just begin to say sweet things about him. Let's invoke this atmosphere right now, God. Hey. Don't you know God is powerful? Huh? Don't you know God is powerful to perform miracles? <laughs> For a little wretch like me. <laughs> He turned my grave <laughs> into gardens. If he can do it for me, he can do it for you. Hey, cause I searched the well, but it couldn't fill me. A man's empty praise. A treasure that fades is never enough. Ha. Then you came along and put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied here in your love.
you who are watching, go ahead and edify our God. Go ahead and lift him up on this morning. Go ahead and give him a great shout. Thank you, God. What would you do if he walked into the room? What would you do if he walked into the room? What would you say if he walked into the room and how would you praise if he walked into the room how would you shout if he walked into the room how would you shout if you walked into the room, how 
would you pray? If you walk into the road, yeah, what would you say? Oh, if you walk into the road, what would you say? What would you do? I said, what would you do? He's here right now. 
He's here right now. He's here right now. He's here right now. Can you say he's here? He's here right now. Walking it up and down the aisle. He's here right now. Waiting on you to surrender. He's here right now. Waiting on For a holy God, He's here right now. He's here right now. He's here. He's here. He's here right now. Oh, He's here. He's here right now. Come on, come on, come on. Lift up those voices. So I'm listening to the song that we've heard many times, and uh, my mind just began to reflect on my mother and think about my mom. And a little of a week ago, my wife and I was driving. We was having some business and driving, and my mother called me while I was in the truck, and she said, I hadn't talked to you today, and I was... I said, I know my mom was going to call you when I got home, been real busy. And we were talking on, that was a Friday evening. And <clears throat> on Saturday morning, early Saturday morning last week, my brother calls me in the morning. And he says, I'm, I'm rushing mama to the hospital. Um, she, she, she can't talk. And 
something is going on. And uh, my mother, several weeks ago, had um, a blood clot in her leg. And my wife saw her. You know, my wife is a nurse. And she said, you need to go get that looked at. And so my mother did what my wife said and went to her doctor. And she went to the hospital, rather. And they gave her some medicine and sent her home. And she still wasn't doing well and still was trying to persevere through in and out of the hospital, in and seeing the doctor. And so by that Friday when she called me, she's used to me speaking to me at least twice a day and hadn't heard, heard anything from me. So when she called me, we talked, and then that next morning, she couldn't even speak. The blood clot had burst in her brain, and she couldn't talk. And so when I hear a song like that, and I see people who are capable of opening up their mouths, people who can't worship the Lord freely, and my mother is sitting in St. Vincent Hospital, and I saw her the other week, and she's crying. She's asking for my wife. She's frustrated with where she's at. And I see her who couldn't, she couldn't say anything on that Saturday, but that Sunday when I saw her last week, but by Monday she was able to start talking a little bit. I think about the opportunities that the Lord gives us to worship him. I think about the opportunities that God gives us to bless his name, to make our boast in the Lord, to praise him loudly, to celebrate him. And we, we'll take advantage of it and say it's just another Sunday. It's just another service that we're in but you don't realize from one day to the next what could happen that could prevent you from praising the Lord my mother would love to be sitting in here today opening her mouth and praising the Lord so I want to know what would you do if he walked into this room I want to know what kind of praise would you give him if he walked into this room I want to know what kind of shout you would give him if he walked into this room. Now let me go ahead and prophesy. He's here right now. He's here right now. So throw your head back. Reach way down. And somebody shout glory. The presence of the Lord is here. 
Come on, let us exalt his name together. Come on, bless the Lord. Amen. I want to thank you for your prayers. Continue your prayers for my mom and pray, continue your prayers for those who are suffering in this season. And my message today is, is geared to help us and encourage us in seasons like this. We prove to be human, but we trust in the Father. Amen. And my trust is in God. And I know how many know that God is a good God. He's able. Amen. Amen. I want you to join me real quick. I'm going to read three verses in your hearing today, three verses that are meant to encourage you, three verses that speak directly to my life and where I am in my life. I do want to thank you for those who did so into my life and write nice things in a card concerning my 19 years of ministry. Thank you for that. Bless you for that. I, uh, my wife and I were in prayer um, last other week, and I just thought about it and mentioned it to her. So thank you guys for that. And thank you for those who served yesterday. Oh, what a great time of compassionate ministry yesterday. And, and let me encourage you in this. Uh, I was I was talking to my wife after Compassion Ministry is over with, and we were thinking about, I pulled up some pictures, and I guess when I saw the pictures, it made me reflect over Compassion Ministry and the history of Compassion Ministry. And I began to think about how far it has come and how long we've, we've been feeding people in this community for years, for years, for years. And I thought about the goodness of God and what he's doing in the life of anyone. Watch me who will remain faithful and the things that God asked you to do. You know, when God called us to start feeding people in this community, we didn't have well care. We didn't have Northeast Florida. Uh, we were just taking money out of our own account and going to buy groceries. I would go buy groceries. Reggie would go buy groceries. And um, we would sit and bag the groceries. <laughs> Excuse me. Bag the groceries ourselves. And then feed people and talk to them and preach Jesus to them. And then we did, we did this for several years. I'm emphasizing several years because I want you to understand the faithfulness of God and what God does in our life when we remain faithful in the little. When you remain faithful in the little. When you remain faithful with what he's asked you to do. And, and then over the years, after doing it probably about six or seven years faithfully on our own, well care heard about us, heard what we were doing and partnered with us. And then we started doing the truck. And we were so excited to have the truck. And we were thankful for the truck and being able to. And they did provide the truck for years. Years. And then I just testified 
about how Northeast Florida said, I know we don't, we're going to find sponsors so that you guys don't have to pay for the food. You remember I just told you about this. But what I saw yesterday was a culmination of faithfulness and people standing, doing what God asked them to do in the roughest of times and challenging times because we've always had a good solid core group of people, 25, 30 people that would show up on that Saturday and help feed. And out of one conversation with another pastor in our community, there are now, I mean, it must have been 50 people around here yesterday serving. <laughs> Two churches that, and I don't want you to take light of this. I need you to hear me. Two churches that come together in the spirit of unity. And I was, and here's how this ministry has expanded. It has gone from the point of where Reggie and I and maybe two people could just sit and feed and teach people to now we have to have parking lot people. And now we have people serving, have to give direction because the ministry has grown. And this ministry is not about builders of the faith. It's not about Maranatha Church. It's about doing what the Lord Jesus has instructed his church to do, and that is feed the hungry. And here it is. Yesterday, we begin another component of where now evangelism is being introduced to everybody that comes on the campus to receive the food. They're getting prayed over and, and getting to hearing the word of the Lord. Come on, you can do better than that. And so I want you to understand, for those of you who are starting in something, God has commissioned you to do something. Remain consistent in it. Remain faithful in it. Keep doing it, even if it seems like it's not producing. The impact is much more far-reaching than you could ever think. And when the Lord sees our faithfulness, he honors us with increase. He honors us with more responsibility. I'll look for the day when we're feeding thousands of people on this campus, I, where people are being introduced to Jesus. Y'all playing with it, but I believe the Lord for that. So one more time, put your hands together and thank the Lord for the opportunity to do ministry in this season. <laughs> I'm going to read three verses out of the book of John in your hearing today, and I have a lot to say, so don't rush me. I'm good, Vic. You can go, go down next to your husband. I don't, have, I don't got my breakers. So I can preach now. What a great worship. What a great worship. What a great worship. And that's what worship is supposed to do. Pull you into the presence of the Lord. Watch me so that you can release what's on your life. Y'all playing with it. Some of y'all, that's why I'm telling you, that's why you're going to be struggling. Like, worship pulls you into the presence of the Lord, and then when you get in there, you can just give all of him, cast all of your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Hallelujah. These three verses I want you to take with you this week. In fact, I challenge you. Like the old people used to say, I double dog dare you. To read this entire chapter. These three verses are just the tip of the meat that is in these verses, and I just want to read them, and then I want to talk to us for a few minutes. John, the ninth chapter, beginning at verse 1. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man? or his parents, that he was born blind. Now, last verse. Jesus answered, Neither has this man sinned, nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be made manifested in him. From the subject today, let me tell you what I know. Let me tell you what I know. Put your hands together. Shout if you got a voice left and give God a great big praise as you take your seats. Come on, somebody give him a great big praise. Let me tell you what I know. Amen. Thank you if you're watching at home right now. Grab your device. Help me share the message of Jesus. Will you like and share the link that is on your phone? Share your page. 
Uh, you just never know how what you're sharing is going to, how it's going to impact people weeks from now. Just share it. People need to hear the word of the Lord. And this is the Advent, the, the venue in which the Lord is sharing the gospel, allowing us to do it. And I want you to do that for me today. Amen? Like it and share it. Let's dive into this thing. I want you to hear the word of the Lord today. <clears throat> for, for, for many of us, this is not... This has not been an easy season to be a Christian. When you consider everything that is happening around the world and all that is going on, man, right now, for, for, for so many, it just hasn't been an easy season to be a, a Christian. I, I mentioned to my wife that it is almost impossible to share in this season without mentioning COVID-19. And, and, and yes, I know I know that we all are tired of hearing about it, tired of watching it on the news, tired of hearing about the effects of it and all of that. And I know that many of us are hoping that some, very soon, someday, very soon, we will go back to some sense of normality. But the reality is that its effect is far reaching beyond those that we can automatically see on the surface. There are some impacts that is taking place in people's lives that are beneath the surface. People are stressed. Anxiety is up. Depression is up. Suicide is up. People are having to reinvent themselves in 40 and 50 years old because the industry, have, an entire industry has been wiped out. That's another reason why I try to offer God my best praise like it's my last time praising him. Amen. Because when you think of everything that is going on, if the Lord has still sustained you and covered you and kept you, and you still have a job and you're still able to pay your bills, on, and you're still walking in your right mind, <laughs> nobody should have to make you praise the Lord. Let me find about 10 real Christians in here that's just thankful. Just thankful. You know, when you watch how whole entire countries and not countries, states are, are still shut down and people are still secluded in California. My dad tells me about it all the time. He lives in California. And I said to my wife, if we had a Democratic governor instead of Republican, we would probably still be shut down. And you think about stuff like that, but somehow or another, God graces you to still be able to meet your bills. So I'm going to try that again for all the sleepy Christians. <clears throat> for all the ones who are still looking at me like I'm crazy. If the Lord has kept you another week, let's praise the Lord. Just, just kept me, Josh. He kept me. So watch this. The challenges that we're facing are painful. And, and when I talk about the effects of COVID I, and I talk about the things that are internal, I also want to make sure, and this is where I'm really heading in my message today, I, I want to talk about the spiritual impact that it has had on the church. The spiritual impact that it has had on the church. Many have fallen away. Many have left their first love. And the challenges that we are facing are painful and have very real implication. Uh, you know, I, I was thinking today that there, there was a time, there used to be a time when you could fake like you was a believer. You know, there was a time when you could come into a church, just join into what's going on, start serving in the church and what have you, start doing your own thing, and, and no one would even be the wiser. Because you just join in. You just come in. You clap your hands. You lift your hand. And everyone would just assume that you are a believer. Everyone would assume without being the wiser. But remember I told you, it's what you know about God that will keep you in any dark time of your life. In the season that the church is walking out right now is one filled with uncertainties, yes, one filled with suffering, and even one filled with loss. But more important, I need you to hear this, it is a proving season. It is a season where we are being proven as to whether or not we are authentic Christians. 
It's, it's a season of where the heat is being turned up on purpose to find out whether or not we are authentic in our relationship with Christ. I think I said last week to the elders that I was teaching, I said, either this thing is real or it is not. Are you listening to me? Either God is real and able and all powerful or he is not. Either Christ and all that he did to connect us to God is real or he's not. And either you are connected to God for real, rooted deep down in the things of God, loving God, loving the people of God, loving the ways of God, or you are not. This thing real or it's not. And as we continue to walk out this journey, I want you to help you with this. There are going to be, somebody said, there's going to be, there's going to be. There are going to be times, watch me, when God goes to work on his people. I, I'm going to help you. There are going to be moments when God will go to work on his people to produce in them and to prepare them for a greater move. It, it, there are going to be moments when God will unleash the hellhounds, if you will, to prepare you for a greater dimension of servitude. There are going to be moments when all hell breaks out in your life to prepare you for a greater harvest. God will go to work on his people. John teaches us this. He says uh, in John 15, 1 and 2, it says, I am the true vine. My, my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, watch this, he purges it. He purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. The New Living says it's like this. I am the true grapevine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruits. Watch this. And he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so they will produce even more fruit. Uh, the pruning practice entails targeting and removal of disease, damage, dead, non-productive, structurally unsound branches. It is that he will cut them back so that the tree might grow healthier and stronger than it's ever been before. Peter teaches us, he says, that after you've suffered a while, the Lord himself will establish you. In fact, God puts his hand on your life and he begins to cut back everything that is dead, unproductive, damaged, everything that is not producing, everything that is causing him, that is blocking you from your next dimension, everything that is holding your next dimension up, everything. He said, I got to deal with that attitude, so I'm going to put my hands on you and cut that thing back. I'm going to cause hell to break out in your life to get your attention so that I can move you into a next dimension. I wonder, I feel like preacher, I wonder if there's anybody in here that's ready for God to put some hands on them so that he can get them ready for where they are about to go. Lord, help me, Jesus. That, that's God going to work on his children. That's God cutting back. That's God pruning us. That's God cutting on us, putting hands on us so that he can push us into something that's greater than us. He's trying to push us into service into his kingdom. So he's got to cut back pride. He's got to cut back our own ambitions. He's got to cut back what we feel is right. He's got to cut back our emotions. He's got to cut back all of the lust. He's got to cut back all of the stuff that you don't want, that you may want to hold on to, but God's saying, I'm ready to get that out of your life. That's been hanging around too long. I got a great thing in store for you. You don't know what I'm getting ready to do in your life. The devil is trying to keep you rooted and grounded in this thing. Oh, but if you let me cut it back, if you let me cut some stuff back. I'm going to bring some liberty in your life. I wish I had about 15, 20, 35, 50 of y'all that can give your God a praise for him putting hands on you. Can you lay your hands on your chest and say lay your hands on me, Jesus. Put your hands on me, Jesus. Oh my God, let me stop. Let me stop. It's too early, too early, too early, too early. Luke teaches us this. Sit down. It's too early. I, I'm, I got a lot to give you. Watch it out. 
I feel this thing this morning. Luke, Luke, Luke teaches us this. He said, Luke 13 and 6 from the New Living. And Jesus told, told this story. A man planted a fig tree in his garden. And he came again and again to see if there was any fruit on it. But he was always disappointed. Finally he said to his garden, I told Jesus, God is a garden, right? He said, finally he said to his garden, I've waited three years. And there hasn't been a single fig on this tree. C cut it down. It's just taking up space in the garden. The gardener, in his love, said, sir, give it one more chance. Leave it alone another year. I'll, I'll give it special attention. I, I'll give it plenty of fertilizer. If we get figs next year, fine. But if not, you can go ahead and, and, and cut it down here. He, he, he said, listen, I'm going to throw some trials at it. I'm going to throw some mess at it. I'm going to throw some uncertainty at it. I'm going to throw some issues at it. And I'm going to deal with it so that it can begin to produce the fruit. Oh, you! I wish I had somebody in here that's ready to produce in this upcoming year. The devil thought that was going to take you out. But you ought to praise the Lord so radically in here that let the devil know it might be a trial in my life. But I, I came to praise him. I came to bless him this morning. Lord, have mercy. Let me finish. Come on, I feel like preaching. Sit down. Sit down. Come on. Let me give you. Watch this. Jeremiah teaches this. In the Lord, Jeremiah 18, it says, And the Lord gave another message to Jeremiah. He said, Go down to the potter's shop. King James said, The potter's house. And I will speak to you there. So I did as he told me, and I found the potter working at his wheel. But when the jar that he was working didn't turn out as he had hoped, Watch this. He crushed it into a lump of clay and started all over again. Somebody going to catch that by the spirit. You might just be in the potter's hand. Can you stick your hands out like this symbolically by faith and you can see that it might be scarred and marred in a hot mess and got all kinds of issues and all kinds of struggle. And the Lord, instead of casting you away, instead of throwing you back in the pits of hell, he decides to crush you, step on you, pick you up, and begin to make you all over again. Can somebody praise the Lord that he didn't kill you in your mess that he didn't leave you in your foolishness that when the heat turned up he just made you better and stronger put your hands together and bless the Lord right there I'm preaching too early this morning watch this now now slow down slow down I'm all the way at 15 I need to be at a six watch this watch this you know that from the time that we walk the aisle to confess Christ as our Lord or wherever you confessed and embraced him as your Savior, we're placed on the journey, watch me, a journey of knowledge. A journey where we are called to learn all that God is. We are encouraged, watch me if you're listening to me viewing this, when you give your life to the Lord, we are encouraged to find a Bible-believing and Bible-teaching church. You, you need to find a church that you can connect to. Then we are encouraged to submit to spiritual authority. The Lord gives us pastors after his own heart who would teach us what we need to know. And then we are encouraged to start serving in the local church. All of this will begin to help us on our journey of knowledge because everything, pretty much all we know about God, watch me, watch me. You may not like this. We learn from somebody. Jesus teaches us in Matthew. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me for, for I am meek and I'm lowly in heart and you shall find rest for your soul. He says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Peter goes on to say, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that word grace is not just favor. It is God stepping into your life, giving you the power and the ability to do what he has called you to do. I might have said that too fast. What? That grace is God stepping into your life, giving you the power 
and the ability to do what he has called you to do. You haven't lost your mind yet because God has graced you. He, he steps into our situation and gives us what we need to endure it and not only endure it, thrive in it. I want to talk to you for a few minutes about Margaret Gar um, Gary. Margaret Gary. She, she was an 85-year-old nun who lived in a convent near Baltimore. She was in this convent, and all of the nuns were going to a three-day conference away from the convent. Margaret was left there by herself. She did not go to the conference. Shortly after everyone left, she came down to the, from her room to the kitchen to get her a snack, something to eat. Margaret goes into the refrigerator, and she pulls out a jar of water with celery sticks in them. She takes the water and the celery sticks, and she makes her way back to the elevator. She gets on the elevator, pushes the up button, and when she pushes the up button, the, the elevator goes up a couple of feet, and it stops. And she said, uh-oh. And so she tries to pry the doors open. And as soon as she tries to pry the door open, the electricity went out, goes out. She begins to say, oh, you know, I don't have to worry. I have my cell phone with me in my purse. So she reaches down in her purse to pull out the cell phone, only to realize that she does not have a signal in the elevator shaft. So at that point, she begins to panic. And then the Holy Spirit calms her. And she says, listen, I can either panic or I can pray. Watch this. I'm going to fit. So she said, it looks like I'm going to have a three-day prayer revival, prayer retreat, and I don't have to reserve any space. You got to catch this. She sits down on the floor of the elevator. She eats some celery sticks and prayed. She sit a little while longer, and she drinks the water that was in the jar that was holding the celery sticks, and she prayed. She reached into her purse and found some cough drops in her purse, and she ate on them, and she prayed. And when she got sleepy, she took a sweater and curled it up and made a pillow and put her purse in her back so her back wouldn't hurt against the wall of the elevator, and she prayed. And when finally three days had passed and the other sisters of the convent showed up, they said to her, what were you thinking while you was locked in the elevator? What was it like for you? She said, well, I finally realized God had provided me an opportunity to draw closer to him. Oh, I love that, Eric. I loved it. I hope you're not too holy that you missed that. Because what an amazing outlook on an unfortunate situation. And this story spoke to me because with everything that is going on in the world, around the world, in our community, in our nation, and in our personal lives, I wonder how many of us are thanking God for providing us an opportunity to draw closer to him. Life comes at us hard when we're thrown off balance, even when, he has, even when life has us stuck in an elevator and can't go nowhere. It's how we respond that will determine how much we know about God. And see, that's where I'm trying to get us to see. It's how you respond when your life is pressed into a box that you can't get out of. How do you respond? That response will determine how matured you are and how much you know about God. I offer today three ways that we respond, three ways. Here's the first way we rebel. We, we, we push against it. We, we, get, we fight against it. We get angry about it. We get mad at God, mad at the world, and mad at anybody that has any thing to do with it. We keep pushing it away. I hate it. I can't stand it. I don't know why I'm having to deal with this. We complain to our friends about where we are and what we're struggling with. I'm tired of the job. I'm tired of my spouse. I'm tired of the children. I'm sick of this. And we just fight and fight and fight and fight and fight and fight against it. We fight against it. And I believe that this is where most people live. I believe it is probably the most popular response because it is where our emotions live at. It's where we respond out of our emotions. Here's the second way 
that we can, what the second way that we can respond, we can resign. We can resign. It, it, you begin to feel like you are powerless in the trial. And so you just lie down in the trial. And while it is important for us to understand that there are some things that are beyond our control and things that we can do nothing about while we're in it. I mean, we are absolutely powerless. It is up to God. But here's the thing. It's one thing to acknowledge the fact that you have no control over the matter. But more, unlikely, more than likely, what begins to happen is people begin to feel a sense of powerlessness without any hope. It's when you begin to lie down in deceit and despair. You just begin to slip all the way into despair. You begin to put your resignation in. You say it's over with. There's no power to pray. There's no reason to pray. There's no reason to pursue God in this thing. This thing has taken me over. So instead of that, we just resign from the situation. Now, Jesus, because he loves us and because he cares for us, he does not want us to get stuck in our rebellion where we are continually compounding the pain and continue to live out our emotion. He does not want us to do that. And neither does our Lord want us to begin to slip into despair as if the world is over with and everything is done he does it so Jesus in his love he offers to his church a third response and that third response my brothers and sisters is to rejoice when, when you hear the word rejoicing, you don't get a whole lot of people to jump on for that they're not catching this watch this when you hear the word rejoice when you hear rejoice, I want you to think about Matthew 5 and 11. He says from the New Living, and God blesses you when people mock you and persecute you and lie about you and say all sorts of evil things against you because you are my follower. What does he say? Be happy about it. Be very glad for great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember the ancient prophets were persecuted just like you. He says rejoice rejoice in James the brother of Jesus teaches us in James 1 and 2 consider it pure joy my brothers whenever you face trials of many kind rejoice 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 I know it's hard and I know that it's difficult but here is where God wants us to eventually make our journey he wants me watch me watch me he wants us to begin choosing what you did not choose. Choosing what you did not choose. I don't mean that you sugarcoat your situation. It doesn't mean that you go, oh, this is so beautiful, and this is great, and I just love this. No, no, no. No, it's painful. No, it hurts. It's wrong, and it's hard. And I know I'm not the only one here. If you could get rid of it, you would. But somehow or another, it is beginning, watch this, it is where we begin to look at the situation with clarity and reality, watch me, and we begin to say, nonetheless. Are you catching me? We get to the place where we look at the difficult time, the box that we are being thrown in, the trial that we're having to face. I don't know why God has allowed this situation to hit my mother, but nonetheless. I don't know why you're having to go through what you're going through. And I don't know the pain that you're suffering. And I don't know why a sickness has plagued your life. And I don't know why you're having to deal with that. But is there anybody in here besides Robert that can give God a nonetheless praise? I, I, I'm, I'm deciding to choose what I didn't choose. I, I didn't come here today to have to accept the hell that I'm in, but for some reason or another, you want me to choose what I didn't choose because now I understand that you're working in it. You got to get like Peter who said, we toiled all night. We've been working this thing all night in Luke. He says, we're tired, but nonetheless, nevertheless, that's your word. You got to get like Jesus who is praying in the garden of Gethsemane and he's tired and he's frustrated. The Bible said that he's praying with great drops of blood that are falling from him. He said, if it were possible for you to remove this cup from me. And then he said, but nevertheless, not my will, 
but your will be done. You got to get to the point where you choose what you don't want to choose because you understand that somehow or another God has put his hand on you. Somehow or another God is cutting you. Somehow or another God is pruning you for your next dimension. I wish I had about 15, 20 of y'all that can take about three or four steps out of your seat and begin to believe that God is ushering you into the next dimension, a greater dimension of servitude if you can praise them, put a praise on it. If you can bless them, bless them real loud. Tell somebody, get out of my way. Get out of my way. God is getting ready to raise me up for my next dimension. And if you're choosing what you didn't choose, Chantel, if you're embracing what you didn't embrace, Johnny, put a praise on it. Because God is working in it. Somebody throw your head back. Shout real loud, glory! Come on, praise him and take your seats. I got a few more minutes here. Choosing what you did not choose. I guarantee you, none of us chose to be in the hell and the stuff we go through. But when you can see God working in it, when you can see God putting his hand on you, Timothy, to take you to some place you ain't been before. Anybody besides Robert to go into another dimension of serving God? Y'all play, that's so weak. Anybody besides Robert's hungry after God and if he have to take me through hell to get me there. But by the time I get to where he's at, Watch me, watch me. I have to choose to accept this situation as a situation in which God can work in. Watch this. I got to accept this situation as a situation that God can work in which I believe God's love cannot be stopped. And he can work even in this for my good and his glory. Lord, help me. We got to get like Margaret. I finally realized that God has provided me an opportunity to draw closer to him. Let me talk about my text and get us out of here. I wish there was more time for me to discuss all of the meat that is inside of this powerful chapter that John is writing. Our verses say that Jesus passed by and saw a man which was blind from his birth. And the disciples begin to ask him, who, who sinned? Who, who messed up? This man or his parents that he was born blind? And Jesus said, neither this man sinned nor his parents. No, no, neither one of them sinned. But that the works of God should be made manifested in his life. And, and so I, I want to point out a few things. Watch me. Let me point out a few things that I know from this. The first thing is, and this is just for our encouragement because I got to get through this. The first thing is that Christ saw him. This, this, watch, and this is such profound. We, all of us right here and all of you that are viewing, I want you to rest in the fact that God sees you. When, when you really begin to embrace the fact that God sees the injustice, that God sees your pain, that God sees your tears, that God sees how hard it is for you, that it's not like you're just going through this for naught. God sees what's happening to you. There's a reason, one of the reasons the verse says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will repay because God sees when people do us all kinds of ways. And he allows stuff to happen because he's trying to take us somewhere. One day you're going to get to the point where they can cuss you out and it doesn't even move you. One day you're going to get to the point where they can mistreat you and it doesn't even change your demeanor. 
One day you'll get to the point where they rob you, mistreat you, and do all kinds of things. And you'll think about the verse in Matthew that says, count it all joy. And you just begin to celebrate. One day you want to get to the point that you understand God sees me. And if God sees me, then he knows exactly what is happening to me. Here's the second thing uh, that I know. Christ knows how long. He knows how long. Why? The, the Bible says that the man was born blind. And watch this. He clearly, based off the text and all that is written later in the text, the man is grown. Nine, John 9 and 19. And then they asked him, saying, is this your son? They're talking to the Pharisees. The Pharisees are talking to the man's parents. Is this your son? who ye say was born blind, how do he now see? John 9 and 19. And his parents answered them and said, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But by what means he now seeth, we know not. Or who has opened his eyes, we know not. Watch this. He is of age. Ask him. He shall speak for himself. So if he was born blind and now he's of age to speak for himself, that means years have gone by. Things he's had to endure being blind. But here's the first thing I know. Jesus saw him. Jesus knows how long he is. And here's the third thing I know just from reading the text. People will always talk about you. I wonder if you can look to the persons that are on your road and close to them and just say, they're talking about you. Look across the way. <laughs> you, hey, come on. I'm trying to help you here. I'm trying to help you. Tell them they're talking about you. If you're online, go ahead and text it. Hashtag it. They, yeah, they're talking about you. Here is the reality, because the disciples said, well, who's sin? Because he was born blind, his parents or this man. What happened that he was apparently, watch this, cursed with blindness? What happened? What, why is he blind? He must have done something. Amazingly, the first thing people think about when they see saints thrown into an elevator, thrown into a dark time, thrown into something, is that they immediately begin to think that that person must be sinning. And even Job's friends say, how did you get this on your, how did you lose everything? Lose your children, your house, your money. Now you're sitting on a dunghill scraping balls off of you. How did you get there? Clearly, you have sinned with I want to prophesy in this atmosphere. There will always be people who have no idea what God is doing in your life. There are going to always be folk who won't understand the trial, watch this, that you have to go through to get the wisdom you need for the next dimension of your life. You won't get that wisdom without God putting his hands on you. So God throws you in the fire and you learn some stuff that when you get out of the fire, you're ready for your next dimension. And so people will judge you and think that you've messed up. But I wish I had somebody in here that has ever come up out. I'm going to preach myself happy. You thought my sickness was sin, but God was increasing my faith. Where's Wes got to give me a healing ministry? You thought I was going through for nothing? I wish you had a praise that can thank God for where he is taking you while he's using you. The heat that you're in. I can't preach it. Like I need somebody that can fist bump about three people and tell them, mind your business. Mind your business. I wish you could look them square in the eyes for all of your haters and all of the folk who have spread lies and rumors about your situation. Folk don't know that God's got you on your face. Folk don't understand that God is producing an anointing in your life. Folk who don't understand that God's developing you. Folk who don't understand that God's trying to take you to a greater place and you're catching hell right now. Like my daddy said, you're catching more hell than Carter got liver pill, but you're going through and people looking at you, but why are they looking at you they don't realize that God is working in your life they don't see your praise 
being perfected. They don't see your shout being perfected. They don't see your prayer life going up because all they see is what's going on. But I wish I had somebody who can give God a crazy praise that say he's working on me and you need to mind your business. He's doing a work in me and you need to mind your business. He's turning my life around and you need to mind your business. I feel an anointing to turn around. I feel a spin coming on. I feel some folk ought to just take a few spins. Spin around and begin to declare that he's turning my life around. He's turning my health around. He's turning my marriage around. He's turning my finances around. He's turning my mind around. He's fixing what's wrong with me. Leave me alone. Don't stop me from praising him. Don't stop me from blessing him. Don't stop me from shouting on him. God is working in my life. And if you knew where he was taking me, you'll praise the Lord with me. If you knew where he was lifting me up, you'll praise the Lord with me. If you knew where he was getting ready to do in my life, you'll praise the Lord with me. Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here that can give God a crazy, ridiculous praise? Throw your head back. Reach way down and somebody shall glory. Somebody shall glory. Somebody shall glory. Praise. Praise the Lord. Praise him. Praise him in your elevator. Praise him with the power off. Praise him with nothing there. But you and God lift him up. Lift him up. Lift him higher. Lift him higher. Lift him higher. Higher than your issues. Higher than your pain. Higher than your struggle. Higher than your mother. Higher than your father. Higher than your children. Higher than your husband. Higher than your wife. Lift them higher. Come on. Take your seats. I got to get up out of here. I got to tell you a couple more things I know. Here, here's another thing I know. Come on, sit down. I, I want to finish it. Sit down, sit down, sit down. I got a date with my wife. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Here, here's another thing I know. God has his own timing. Watch this. So the man was born blind. Watch this. But he was born years before Jesus showed up on the scene. He was born blind and kept blind. Until the timing of the Lord, when the timing of the Lord met his issue so that the man could testify of who Jesus is. God will keep you locked into something until he's ready for that Kairos moment, that opportune time, that right time. He'll keep you stuck right there. You trying to figure out another year going by. No, God ain't ready to manifest yet. You trying to figure out, oh man, how much longer? He ain't ready to manifest yet. But I'm here to prophesy that your Kairos moment is about to come into fruition. And the thing that's been holding you down for years, you're about to meet the hand of God. And when the hand of God meets your issue, you ought to celebrate him because he's going to manifest Uh, sit down, place Eric, place up there. I gotta stop. I got too much more. Come on, stand to me, stand with your feet, stand your feet. I gotta leave that alone because I'm about to preach that all over. I'm about to preach that all over. I'm about to preach that. Watch me, watch me. Everyone standing, watch me. The man was born blind, 
stayed blind until his encounter with Jesus so that, that's why I say you got to read the whole chapter, so that he could testify of who Christ was. I mean, who Christ is. Here are a couple of things I know. There, there are several ways that we gain knowledge, right? There are several ways as a church that we gain knowledge. As a believer, remember, it's what you know about God that will keep you in any dark time. Like Margaret in a dark place in an elevator, she said, I can either panic or pray. It's what you know about God that will keep you. Here, here's something I know. God uses the preached word to give us knowledge, right? God's MO, as my bishop has instructed, is words. And I want to say to every one of you that are watching me, every one of you, if the Lord has given you a voice, use it to preach his word. If he has given you a platform, Facebook, if you are an influencer in any way, preach his word. I know you want to talk about your house, your clothes, your new car, your new boo, and all of that stuff. But in a world that is lost and in need of a savior, if we are the church of Jesus Christ and he has given us a platform, we ought to preach his word. So I challenge you, double dog challenge you, over the next few weeks, take down all of the stuff that's about you. Pull back everything that you're talking about what you're doing and all what you're doing. And I dare you to use your influence, your Facebook page, your YouTube platform, your text blast, your Zoom meeting to lift up the name of Jesus and preach his word. The scriptures empower us. They teach us the things of God, the ways of God. And it's so funny because... My message today, I, I changed several things on it. And then I got up here and it didn't down, upload. That was really my wife. She walked in there and said, I told you your message is fine. My wife has a prophetic gift. So she walked in and saw me. She said, I told you your message is fine. I said, leave me alone. <laughs> and then I get up here and none of the stuff that I did is even on the thing. None of it. All of this is the Holy Spirit. I'm like, I cut that out, I cut that out. But here's the last thing I know. Testimonies and our experience can't be taken from us. If you've ever had an encounter with God, it doesn't matter, ain't that right, Josh? It doesn't matter what nobody says. And here is what I love because I love the fact that God will allow people to know you before. Reggie, and then they see you after. Is that before and after? In John 9 and 18, the neighbors therefore, the neighbors therefore, and they which before had seen him that he was blind, said, is not this he that sat and begged? Some say he, it's him. Others say, well, he looks like him. And he said, I am he. Yeah, I know. Therefore, they said, how were thine eyes open? Verse 11. And he said, and, and he said, and he answered, a man that is called Jesus made clay, anointed my eyes, said unto me, go to the pool of Siloam and watch. And I went and washed and I received my sight. And then they said, then where is he? He said, I don't know. <laughs> when you have a testimony, no one can take it from you. Here's my last scripture and then prayer. John 9 and 24. And then again, <laughs> this is, these are religious leaders. Then again called they the man that was blind and said unto him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. Verse 25, and he answered and said to them, look here, man, check this out. Whether he be a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I know. 
Let me tell you what I know. Let me tell you what I know. One thing I know. I was blind. But now I see. And I'm here to tell you that's what's about to happen in your life. If you're ready to know God like that, lift your hands. Lift your hands. You might be in an elevator this morning, but let me tell you what I know. Suffering will bring you closer to God. You might be in a dark place right now, but let me tell you what I know. Trouble don't last always. You may be in a back against the wall, but let me tell you what I know. He is able to deliver you out of every affliction, every trial. He wants you to trust him. He wants you to praise him. He wants you to believe him. Let me tell you what I know. Praise will silence the enemy. Let, let, me, let me tell you what I know. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. Let me tell you what I know. Many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver them out of them all. Let me tell you what I know. He is a very present help in the time of trouble. Let me tell you what I know that by his stripes, I am healed. So all over this building today, lift up a praise unto the one true God and give him glory and bless his name. Hallelujah. Father, today, we may be like Margaret, stuck in an elevator, powers out in a dark place, but you're with us. The word has declared that you would never leave us, neither will you forsake us. So today, may we become your mouthpiece. May people hear your voice in ours. May we stop rebelling. May we take back the resignation paper. And may we find it in our hearts to rejoice even in a crazy place. You are our strength. You are our redeemer. You are everything. So now, God, breathe upon us. Help us that we might represent you well and respond well in life's difficulties. In Jesus' name, thank him like you love him this morning. I love him. Come on, bless him real good. You are my strength, strength like no other. Strength like, strength like no other. Come on, it reaches. Reaches to me. Come on, you are my strength. You are my strength. Come on, put a little speed to it. Come on, strength line. Strength like no other. Woo! Strength like no other. Come on, it reaches. It reaches to me. Come on, in the fullness. Woo! Oh, yeah. In the fullness of your grace. Come on. In the power of your name. Come on, you lift me up. You lift me up. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, Vicky.
are my strength. Strength like strength like no other. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Come on, me. Come on, give God a great big praise for being your strength. Strength like no other. Watch me. We have been on this journey of where God has been challenging us, stretching us in our giving in this season. And we are, God is, hopefully those of you who are praying and asking God, what are my giving goals in this season? I challenge you to trust the Lord. And the platforms that we, God, has laid out in the Bible are opportunities for us to experience God. And so the Father says, I want to show you, if you trust me with your tithe, if you trust me with your offering, you trust me in giving um, to the poor. You trust sacrificially. And then if you can consistently, consistently honor your leader, I will begin to expand your life, cover your life, and protect your life. I feel impressed by the Lord to lead our church in this season. I want you to pray more now than ever about God giving you your giving goals. We have goals for everything else. Why not trust the Lord to see that at the end of 2021, you've given more than you've probably ever given before. Remember the Lord, because there are ways that he wants to present to you his kingdom, his power, his hand, working in your life. Now, there are four ways that you can give to this local church. I got you, Rick. Dollar cash app, dollar sign, B-O-T-F-C-C. -C. That's cash app you can give there. You can give on Giveify, which is the app that my wife and I use and most of the members of this congregation use. It tracks your giving. And if you're able, you can go every month, every month, and see how much you're giving if you're giving even a little bit more. Trust the Lord. He, you can do more. His hand is going to bless your life. You can go to the website, buildersofthefaith.com, and you can also give to the mail. You can mail in 5900 Ricker Road. And the Lord will bless you and your giving. Thank you for your generosity. Pastor Ben, will you come and use your wife, Mike, and dismiss us this day? Come on. Bless the Lord. Amen. Put your hands together for the man of God. Bless you. All right. Praise the Lord. Did everybody enjoy the message on today? All right. Well, we're going to just go ahead and pray out. And I pray that the word that God has given um, the house on today, that you just apply it. And we just believe in God and trust in God in everything that we do. All right. Father God, as we come before you as humble as we know how, God. I pray right now, Lord God, a special blessing upon the, the members and the pastor of the Builders of the Faith Community Church here. Father God, I just pray right now that you just cover us each and every day, Lord God. As we depart this place with never your presence, God, I pray that we hide your word in our heart, God, and that we trust and lean on you each and every day of our lives, Lord God. We thank you and we praise you, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 Before you get out of here, I forgot, we have the Knot Ministry this Friday night. It is our marriage ministry. Engaged couples, I did not want to leave without encouraging you to please be a part of that. We have child care and food provided. Come and enhance your relationship with the Lord. And if you're in here and you need an envelope, raise your hand and they'll make sure somebody gets you one. Thank you for being a part. Thank you for worshiping. Sign up. There's a sign-up sheet in the foyer. We need you to sign up so we can get a good count. We love you. Thank you so much.